The G-Shock GA2100 first released in 2019 has gone on to become one of their biggest sellers and its shape is as familiar to G-Shock enthusiasts as the DW5600 and the DW6900. Since its launch many variants have been released including ones equipped with tough solar and steel cased variants. In April 2024 G-Shock launched the GA2300 series which is essentially a GA2100 Cassioke in a smaller and thinner case. Today we'll take a look at it to see if it's worth getting. When images of the GA2300 were first released, I must be honest and say that I wasn't really interested in getting one for myself. The launch colorways available in all countries didn't really appeal to me and they don't really show off the watch to its full potential. I already owned a GA2100 SKE and the three colorways available didn't really stand out too much from that. They were available in a black, white and a fuchsia pink colorway. The one I found the most interesting was the pink one but it's quite divisive and besides it wouldn't go with any of my outfits. Then I found out about a fourth colorway which was available and as far as I can tell it's only been launched in the UK, Taiwan and Singapore and so I got it immediately. This is the GA2300 8A which has a light grey case and strap, a black dial and orange coloured hands. In my opinion it looks quite striking and so I'm unsure as to why it's only on sale in a few markets. I'm glad I didn't hesitate to pick up this variant because it's currently sold out and I'm unsure whether it's a limited edition or if they will be restocking it again. The watch has been marketed as being unisex and so the dimensions are smaller than the GA2100 coming in at 45.4mm in length, 42.1mm in width and 11.6mm in depth. And here's the two watches side by side so you'll get a good idea of the size difference. The weight is also marginally lighter coming in at 49 grams and even though it doesn't weigh much you still get the G-Shock build quality that you've come to expect from the brand. The toughness in the GA2100 was provided by a carbon fibre reinforced inner case or what G-Shock calls the carbon core guard. That is no longer present in the GA2300 and instead they're now using their patented hollow cord guard structure to provide the shock resistance. I think that there must be a misprint on the tag that comes with the watch because it's still showing the carbon core guard symbol on it. One of the things that intrigued me about the watch and wasn't immediately apparent from the marketing photos were the purpose of the plastic attachments at the ends of the straps. They're not there just as a visual element but they act like strap adapters allowing a 22mm strap to attach to an 18mm lug width. They also help to centre the watch whilst being worn on the wrist. The band and outer case material are made of PU resin and feel pliable and soft to the touch so you won't need a breaking in period. And on the back is an engraved steel backplate held down by four screws. Water resistance like all standard G-Shocks is rated at 200 meters. Inside the case is a brand new 5725 module and this is powered by two SR726W cells which should give it about three years of power depending on use. You also get well time from 48 cities, five alarms, a stopwatch that can count up to 24 hours and a countdown timer that can count down from a minimum of one minute to a maximum of 24 hours. The module also lets you set the duration for the backlight and the afterglow can be set to turn on for either one and a half seconds or for three seconds. The dial design is my favourite feature of the watch. The smaller diameter used for the mineral glass crystal makes the watch more balanced in design than the GA2100 whose width was slightly too large in my opinion. In contrast the size of the GA2300 should suit people who have wrists of 7 inches or less in circumference. For reference my wrists are 6 and a quarter inches. I also like the X going across the dial and the way it's used to divide up the two LCD panels. The feature which makes the dial pop are the orange painted neo bright hands. They really stand out in daylight against the black face but at night time they don't glow that brightly. But thankfully the super illuminator backlight works quite well. The orange font used for the day markings is also a nice touch. 
During certain times of the day, the hands can lie in a position where they obstruct the LCD panel, which could make operating features such as the stopwatch difficult. Casio have thought about that and you're able to move them out the way by holding down the mode and light button. And when you're done, you're able to resume normal operation with the same two buttons. Let's take a look now at the disadvantages of the watch and there is only one that I can think of and that is the digital part of the display. In broad daylight it's just about readable but at night time it's almost impossible without using the backlight. I think that they could have used the opportunity when designing the new module to come up with something better while still retaining the same aesthetic. The other minor gripe I have is not with the watch but with the packaging. As you saw at the beginning of the video it comes in a cheap cardboard box. I'm used to the traditional G-Shock tins, but G-Shock seems to have stopped using them on their new releases, even their high-end models. It takes a little bit away from the experience of owning a G-Shock. Let's take a look now at the diagnostic screens of the GA2300, and you can also use this feature to legit check your G-Shock. To go into them, hold down the adjust, the mode and the start buttons from the home screen. This will activate all the pixels in the LCD panels and will also make the minute hand start ticking every second. You can continue to scroll through the other diagnostic screens and finally exit with the start button. This screen shows the firmware version used inside the module and as you can see is exactly the same as that in the GA2100. Finally, I wanted to show you what the watch looks like inside, and to do that, remove the four screws from the back plate. At the back is a silicon pad to provide the shock absorbency, and setting that aside reveals the module. The watch is assembled in Thailand but the module is made in Japan and here you can see the two battery cells used to power the watch. Overall I think that the GA2300 is a great evolution of the original GA2100. The original colorways offered at launch may be a little bit uninspiring but I'm sure many other variants will be offered in the future which will pique your interest.